The Joe Rogan Experience is considered one of the most intellectual podcasts on the internet. But there have been instances where Joe Rogan humiliated himself by not conducting proper research, narrating fake stories, spreading false information, and then apologizing for what he said. Let's discuss six times Joe Rogan humiliated himself on his podcast. On the Joe Rogan Experience, episode number 1817, the conversation between Rogan and guest Hotep Jesus took a steep turn when they discussed a story about how the Australian government wants to ban people from growing their own food. You know, I want to find out what this is, but I read something briefly and I didn't get into the article. They were saying that they were trying to pass a bill that would outlaw you growing your own food mm -hmm. in Australia. Oh, oh, my, oh God. my God. Did you read it? He read some article headlines, and without going deep into it, he just thought of sharing it with millions of people who watch his podcast. He not only discussed what he read, but also tried to pull off an Australian accent to mock this law and the lawmakers. You could grow your own food, and what if the disease is from your food? He tried to go into the details of what he read, but all he could name was agriculture and contamination. What, what their justification was, but I'm pretty sure it had to do with like agricultural mm. contamination or... When he couldn't pick more things from the alleged article he read, he started cracking jokes about growing pigs in the backyard. You know, like, I mean, you could justify it if you're a real piece of shit. You could say, well, you know, most pandemics have come from agriculture, but animal agriculture, mm. we can't have unchecked pig ownership. <laughs> That's not fair. At this moment, he's acting more like a comedian rather than a responsible podcaster who's being heard by millions of people. Any of you growing vegetables? What have your vegetables ever got in them and diseases? <laughs> he tried to link this story with an anti-vaccine conspiracy theory thing, which we're going to talk about in later parts of this video. Fucking creeps, man. <laughs> These fucking creeps, they, they got a good grip on people during the pandemic. They locked yeah. everybody down in Australia, and then you know what? We're going to stop these motherfuckers from growing their own food, because that's how you fucking smoke out an anti-vaxxer. And now, whatever he said just backfired on him in real time. After mocking this bill for quite a few minutes, he asked his team to Google this bill, and to his surprise, nothing came up. Do you find anything? No. You are now dependent upon um, the state. Passes bill. No, I, I mean, I know what to look for. I'm just, it's not, nothing is coming up. Uh, the closest thing I could find was something like this. I don't, that's not New what food, no, it's not, saying. it's not in New oh, Zealand. Zealand. Mm. It's in, uh, it's in Australia. I know, but this is close. And New and Zealand is like right around the corner. Could have. Right. Uh, All they could find was news about some law in New Zealand, and as the guest said, New Zealand is right around the corner. Maybe now they would tie this theory with New Zealand. Gladly they didn't steep any lower. Instead, Joe just tried to Google this alleged law and the article he read. He couldn't find anything. He just stated it was too good to be fake. God, it's gotta be a, a real thing. Mm. It seems too good to not be. Yeah, because now you can't pair it up with your conspiracy theories. With this poorly researched theory, he humiliated himself live on the podcast. The episode went out, and netizens criticized Rogan for digging a rabbit hole without even asking any questions about its existence in the first place. This was not the only time when Joe Rogan discussed something without doing his prior research. In episode 1880, during a conversation with Tulsi Gabbard, he narrated this story. My friend, his wife, is a school teacher, and she works at a school that had to install a litter box in the girls' room because there is a girl who's a furry oh who identifies goodness. as an animal, and her mother badgered the school until they agreed to put a litter box in one of the stalls. Yeah. So this girl goes into the litter room, or to the, the girls' room, and urinates or whatever. I don't know if she poops in it. That's pretty gross. <laughs> According to this story, a school-going girl identifies herself as a furry, which is a growing community of people who are interested in exhibiting anthropomorphic animal characters and their attributes. He then adds on how her mother forced the school to do as her daughter is demanding. Then he not only mocked the girl and her mother, but also talked like they've literally opted for a litter box. 
it is. You're a fucking human being, and you prefer a litter box? You want to piss into a, a pile of sand mm. rather than use a bathroom yeah. that you could flush the toilet, wipe yourself like a normal person. Like, you're so crazy uh. with what you think an animal is that not only have you said this, but you've conned the school yeah. into putting this fucking litter box in a girl's room. Yeah. He then ended this discussion by accusing the girl and daughter of conning the school. The story got him backlash on Twitter and other platforms. That's why in a later episode with Michael Shermer, he clarified that their litter box story was a hoax. It's weird. It's, like, know, it's more I, like an urban legend. I, I fed into that, and let me, I should probably clarify that a little bit. I have a friend, and my friend's wife is a school teacher, and she told him that there was discussions in the school that a mother wanted to put a litter box in one of the bathrooms. And he told me this, and I talked about it on here, and then people were saying, that's not true, this is an internet rumor. So I contacted him again, and I said, tell me exactly what she said, and contact her and find out. She no longer works at that school, she works for another school. Mm. She contacted the other school, she didn't get a response. I don't think they actually did it. I think there was discussions mm. about doing it because there was one particularly wacky mother but there is, it doesn't seem that there's any proof that they put a litter box in there. It was just his friend's wife, who's a school teacher, heard some things related to putting a litter box in the school. Somewhat the same incident of not doing proper research happened a few years ago. During episode number 1538, while conversating with Douglas Murray, Rogan talked about the wildfires that were happening in Portland. During that conversation, he said this. That is, that exemplifies yeah, yeah. that right now. And it's, uh, to me, yeah. they, they, they've arrested people for lighting forest fires up there. They've arrest, yeah, yeah. Uh, arrested left-wing people for lighting these forest fires, you know, air quote activists. And uh, this is something that's also not widely being reported, you know, that people have actually been arrested for lighting fires up there. Not only believed, but also spread the news that left-wing activists were behind the Oregon wildfires. He then added and said that the authorities had arrested left-wing people. As per his statement, leftists were involved in lighting these horrifying fires, and the media didn't report these arrests. He portrayed this arrest and wildfire issue as a propaganda against the mayor of the city and leftists wanted to damage people. Like, if I would love to talk to the mayor and say, what is your strategy for ending this? Are you, are you hoping this yeah. is just gonna die down? Yeah. Like, because they, they, these people want your head. And they want yes. blood, and they don't, they don't seem to be willing to settle for anything less. This time, Rogan's half-cooked story was of a sensitive nature. It was not just against the left-wing people. It was about accusing leftist groups of taking the lives of tens of people, destroying their houses, and burning a million acres of land. The clip circled in the online leftist community, and Rogan faced mass criticism and hatred from people. So in order to compensate for his wild theories, Rogan published an apology tweet stating, I effed up on the podcast with Douglas Murray and said that people got arrested for lighting fires in Portland. That turns out not to be true. I was very irresponsible for not looking into it before I repeated it. I read one story about a guy getting arrested for lighting fires, turned out to be true, but the other shit I read about people getting arrested for lighting fires in Portland was not true. I repeated it without looking into it, and it was a really effing stupid mistake that won't happen again. I'm sorry. Spreading half-cooked information and opposing well-supported narratives seems to be Joe Rogan's favorite hobby. One example of this is the episode in which he literally bashed people who receive basic universal income or support it. So one thing that happened during this pandemic was I, I opened, it opened my eyes about human nature. Like, I used to be very pro-universal basic income. My thought was, wouldn't it be great if you just had enough money so you could eat and you so could pay your rent, thing? and then you could pursue what you wanted to. But the reality of human nature came fully into focus when I realized that one, when some people got all that money from the government, the COVID money, and then they got unemployment, uh -huh. they didn't want to work. He started by stating his previous belief about universal basic income, that getting a survival income is okay. But as soon as he matured, he realized that having survival money makes people lazy. 
He tied this narrative to the story of his friend's bar, and the bartender who was not ready to give more than 20 hours to the bar. Through this story, Joe Rogan concluded that having survival money makes people lazy. A friend who has a restaurant, he, he could not get people to come back to work. Yeah. And so one, one buddy of mine, uh, he, a bartender told him, I can come back to work, but I can only work for 20 hours a week, because that way I get unemployment. So he wouldn't work guy. more than 20 hours a week so he could get free money. Mm -hmm. So he could have made more money, but he didn't want to because he didn't want to work. He so he was getting that free money life. and then... That's the stupidest thing you could expect from a man like Joe Rogan because he completely neglected the other side of the story. It is plausible that the bartender was interested in finding another higher paying job. Maybe he was working on a side hustle. He simply ignored the subjective aspects of his friend's story and presented a one-sided perspective on universal basic income. This was not the only moment where he opposed universal income, but this clip went relatively viral and garnered criticism for his stance and weird example. People shared their views under the video. One user said, Free money is the biggest lie, lol. Unemployment insurance is insurance. We pay for that. Isn't interesting how the rich population can capitalize, but when it's time for the rest of the people to capitalize, it's considered unacceptable. Calling poor people lazy is like breathing for rich people, truly second nature. Getting humiliated for his opinion seems to be just a normal day's fun activity for Joe Rogan. However, what happened during the COVID-19 era was by far the most humiliating. It seemed like every day, one way or another, Rogan was getting canceled on the internet. So if I were to say Joe Rogan is one of the most canceled celebrities on Twitter, it wouldn't be an exaggeration. From advising young people to avoid vaccines to experimenting with banned drugs and promoting unproven treatments and bizarre conspiracy theories on his podcasts, Joe Rogan seemed determined to test the limits with Spotify. In episode number 1639, during a conversation with Dave Smith, Rogan encouraged young people and children not to get vaccinated. If you're like 21 years old and you say to me, should I get vaccinated? I, I go, no. His stance was somehow subjective, but suggesting this on a podcast where 16 million people are watching and getting influenced by you is foolish. Fast forward five months after coming back from road travel, Rogan got diagnosed with COVID. So I got up in the morning, got tested, and turns out I got COVID. He developed some severe COVID symptoms and immediately started the medication. So we immediately threw the kitchen sink at it. All kinds of meds, monoclonal antibodies, uh, ivermectin, z uh, prednisone, everything. He mentioned taking ivermectin, a horse dewormer that was strongly not recommended by doctors and the FDA. The media got involved and several doctors bashed Rogan for promoting the drug. Later in January of 2022, Rogan was accused of spreading misinformation. His two episodes with Dr. Robert Malone and Dr. Peter McCullough had controversial discussions on vaccines and COVID treatment. The clips caught the attention of people, and this time 200 plus doctors demanded that Spotify minimize misinformation on their platform. The clash was so intense that Rogan had to release a video message of him clarifying things. If there's anything that I've done that I could do better is uh, have more experts with differing opinions right after I have the controversial ones. He then added that he'd try his best to balance out things and would show all kinds of opinions on the show. My pledge to you is that I will do my best to try to balance out these more controversial viewpoints with other people's perspectives so we can maybe find a better point of view. I Almost a year after this major controversy, Rogan again fell into the trap of the no research syndrome. In episode number 1919, during a conversation with the guest Brett Weinstein, a former professor of evolutionary biology and COVID-19 vaccine skeptic, Rogan and Weinstein hit all the pandemic classics, including theories about vaccines. At one point, Rogan amplified a fake tweet targeting a Florida doctor. The tweet stated, I will never regret the vaccine. Even if it turns out I injected actual poison and have only days to live, my heart and is was in the right place. I got vaccinated out of love, while anti-vaxxers did everything out of hate. 
If I have to die because of my love for the world, so be it. But I will never regret or apologize for it. Rogan lashed out at the Twitter ID named Dr. Natalia for categorizing people who are afraid of vaccine experimentation on themselves. Rogan read her tweet again and again and called her out for being a doctor and having such non-compassionate views. But later, it turned out to be a fabricated tweet. The actual Dr. Natalia gave interviews to several media outlets revealing that she had been harassed in her DMs. Once again, Joe Rogan posted an apology tweet, and he removed that part from his episode. He stated, I was informed last night that this tweet is fake. The show was already out, so we initially decided to post a notice saying we got tricked, then later thought it best to just delete it from the episode. My sincere apologies to everyone, especially the person who got hoaxed. All these controversies and his habit about sharing stuff without checking it first have made people see him as that internet guy who's up for anything, whether it's folks bashing him or seeing him as a big influencer. But one thing is clear, these controversies can't take away his influential persona and his super dedicated fan base.